The first video in this series laid the necessary groundwork of explaining the operations of retroviruses and their ancestral implications. In this video, the layers of ERV evidence will be discussed in detail, along with commentary on creationist responses. The three layers are as follows. Layer 1. When we examine the collective genome of Homo sapiens, we find that a portion of it consists of ERVs. We also find that humans share some of them with chimpanzees. as well as the other hominids, cercopithecids, platyrines, and even prosimians. Since humans don't and or can't regularly procreate and have fertile offspring with members of these species, and thus don't make sizable contributions to their gene pools, and vice versa, their inheritance cannot have resulted from unions of modern species. As previously mentioned, parallel integration is ruled out by the highly random target selection of integrase, and even if it was far more target-specific than observed, it would require so many simultaneous insertions and endogenizations that the evolutionary model would still be far more parsimonious. This leaves only one way that an ERV could have been inherited, by a sexual reproduction of organisms of a species that later diverged into the one the organisms that share the ERV belong to, i.e. an ancestral species. Simply put, humans and the other primates must share common ancestry. Not only are there many ERVs shared among primates, but they're shared in hierarchical subsets of the whole. Each set falls within another set, giving an unbroken line of inheritance for each species. This pattern is called a nested hierarchy. These patterns further corroborate that the many species of primates share common ancestry, and necessitate a specific sequence of divergence from one ancestral species to the next. They are wholly inexplicable by the model of uncommon ancestry. Layer 2. As previously explained, although the LTRs of a provirus must be identical upon insertion, once endogenized, they begin accumulating mutations. Any mutations to one LTR become quite apparent, as they're not accompanied by the same mutations in the other. Thus, each mutation causes the ratio of discontinuity between the two LTRs of a given full-length ERV to increase. Since ERVs and orthologous loci among greater numbers of species of wider taxonomic separation correlate to older insertions, if the evolutionary model is correct, they should also have higher ratios of discontinuity between their LTRs. And what do we find? We find just that. A pattern where the degree of shared ERVs LTR-LTR discontinuity is proportional to the degree of taxonomic separation between the species that share it. There is deviation from the pattern, particularly in the gorilla lineage, likely caused by viral transfer and interelement recombination and conversion, but the pattern holds for many full-length ERVs and is explainable only by descent with modification from a specific series of common ancestral species. Layer 3 When the mutations in shared ERVs are examined, many are found to be identical to others. Just as with the distribution of ERVs, some shared mutations within a single shared ERV fall into nested hierarchies. Some are shared by all, many by subsets of the whole, and each set falls within another set. Despite deviation caused by the same mechanisms affecting LTR-LTR discontinuity ratios, some of these nested hierarchies of mutation match those of distribution. Part of what makes this such powerful evidence for the evolutionary model is that ERV distribution and mutation rely on entirely different mechanisms, the function of integrase and the DNA replication complex, respectively. That the two nested hierarchies match at all is only explicable by common ancestry. In summary, the three layers of ERV evidence that have just been laid out are as follows. Layer 1. 
the presence of ERVs or orthologous loci among species of various degrees of taxonomic separation and of the nested hierarchies they fall into. Since they're passed on through sexual reproduction, ERVs fixed in orthologous loci in different species necessitates the past presence of a species ancestral to both that has since diverged into the two modern ones, and the patterns of their distribution indicate a specific sequence of divergence. Layer 2 the comparative degree of LTR-LTR discontinuity among orthologous full-length ERVs. Since LTRs are identical upon reverse transcription and subsequent insertion, greater divergence correlates to an older insertion. Thus, the patterns of discontinuity indicate sequences of divergences consistent with those indicated by distribution. Layer 3. Shared mutations among orthologous ERVs and the nested hierarchies they fall into. Since mutations accumulate and fix in fixed populations of organisms, the distribution of shared mutations indicates a sequence of speciation events consistent with that which is indicated by both distribution and LTR-LTR discontinuity. There are three common responses to ERV evidence by creationists. The first is to ignore most of it, most notably of which being the patterns of distribution and mutation. The second is to use deviations from these patterns they fail to address as justification for dismissing ERVs outright. For example, they ignore viral transfer and interelement recombination and conversion, and state that the few lineage-specific PTRVs with uncharacteristically high LTR-LTR divergence ratios completely invalidates the second layer of evidence. What they conveniently overlook is that such deviation is to be expected given the complexity of biological systems, and that it's the patterns they ignore that provide some of the strongest evidence for the evolutionary model. The third common response is to use red herrings to dismiss ERV evidence. For example, they explain functional components of very small percentages of ERVs, such as an envelope gene used in sheep reproduction, or LTRs replacing a gene's promoters, yet neither provide evidence that these functions are pre-existing, as they assert, nor even touch on any of the evidence that they were co-opted sometime after insertion. Such evidence includes the deterioration of the remainder of the ERVs in question. Ultimately, the best way to respond to such claims, after having addressed their point specifically, of course, is to relentlessly drive home what they seem least willing to discuss, that deviation from patterns is to be expected, and that the corroboratory patterns of distribution and mutation are solely explicable by the evolutionary model.